Hey there, everyone. Dr. Beth Westy here, and I wanted to come on and talk about the best foods for PCOS. This is kind of a bunch of hooey, it, to be honest with you. Like, I have looked through and studied this extensively from a lot of different people, and it's, it's hooey because it's not really specific to tell you anything other than, oh, look, eat, the, eat these specific fruits that have these vitamins in it that's healthy for this. Eat these veggies that has this fiber in it and these nutrients for this for PCOS. Eat these healthy fats. Eat this lean meat. Sure. But this isn't specific for what you have going on or to say, listen, you have to eat like this or really moderate these things or make sure your body is functioning in a certain way first. That's the bottom line here. Oftentimes when we look at um, something going on in our system, we, we look for, okay, what do I have to change? What do I have to add in? What do I have to do, right, to input into the system to make it better? When really, you have to actually look at how the system's functioning first and then work with that. That's what we miss a lot of the time. It's not just about eating healthy or clean. If it was, it'd be super easy uh, to take care of PCOS issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming from somebody who had horrific ovarian cysts, cysts that would burst put me on the floor in pain. And I was eating a pristine diet, gluten-free, dairy-free, no sugar, no red meat, no alcohol, all that didn't do nothing. <laughs> Why? Because it wasn't about just eating more of these foods to help with the nutrients. Now, does that mean that this is bad? No, it doesn't mean it's bad. And if you're eating garbage, is that going to make you feel like more garbage? Yes. So it is helpful to eat these healthy foods for PCOS, but to expect that to be the end-all be-all that's going to help fix all the things is not a realistic thing, which is why I call it just hooey. When people post this info, is that eat, eat this, eat spinach for PCOS. <laughs> really? Like that's that, just eat, like some women are like, I eat spinach every dang day and I still got issues. Yeah. Yeah, because it's how about your body functioning? Sorry, I'm getting like really worked up and I'm yelling. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just yelling. Hi, Gary. That's Gary. 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 Why? Why? As you saw in my stories, Gary is uh, quite the stinker. And his new favorite thing is to eat raspberries right off the raspberry plants. <laughs> All right, Gary, go on. Go on. He's going to, he's about to chew on something and cause trouble. So. Okay, so how should we eat for PCOS? What are things we should focus on for PCOS? It's important to understand how the female cycle should actually work. And this is something that I teach women how to do in my book, The Female Fat Solution. This is on Amazon. Um, eating for your hormones in your cycle. Estrogen should be higher in the first couple of weeks, and then progesterone should be higher in the second couple of weeks. Oftentimes, this is not exclusive. There are different types of PCOS, but oftentimes estrogen gets to be too high here and it stays too high in the progesterone phase here. And then progesterone, especially if you have a lot of stress going on, progesterone will not rise like it's supposed to, you know, and it'll kind of flatline out here. And that's when you have a lot of hormone issues, um, irregular cycles, maybe you're not ovulating regularly, and that can contribute to PCOS things. There's a whole other component with androgens, testosterone, all that stuff. Um, but just to understand that if this is what's going on for your hormones, and even if you're eating clean and healthy every day, you're not addressing your actual hormones. So what I talk about in my book and what I teach women in the 12 week challenge is how to eat for your hormones in your cycle, how to eat to help your body create and maintain the right amount of estrogen, how to eat to create and maintain the right amount of progesterone, and to do that in that flux and balance. Our bodies ebb and flow throughout the month. So if you are not acknowledge, acknowledging what your body's natural function is throughout the month, you are missing out on the whole eating for your hormones and doing the right foods for PCOS. Because again, it's not about just eating healthy, right? It's about addressing the hormone levels here to get your body that baseline. I'm going to put a link here in the comments. If you guys are not on the wait list for the next 12 week challenge, here you go. Go and get on the wait list here. Um, I also, we also go through a Dutch test for everybody. So how do we know what your hormones are doing? How do we know what's happening for your system? Such a great question. I'm so glad you asked. We actually look at Dutch test. We, you get a hormone test, um, 
you know, sent to your house. It's a urine test. You send it into the lab. Then we go over your levels to say, oh, look, your estrogen is crazy high and you don't have enough progesterone when you should. Mm, that's going to contribute to some of these issues. Let's help your system out. Oh, by the way, if your system is not regulating the amount of hormone in your body, if you have too much estrogen, that estrogen dominance piece, if we're not addressing liver, you're not flushing it out. If you're not addressing gut, you're not flushing it out. If you are not managing your stress levels and making sure you're sleeping really well, you're not going to be able to get ahead of this. Again, I don't care how many foods you eat that are foods for PCOS. If your liver and your gut are not working, it is not going to have an impact on your body. So those are the things that we focus on. We look at your system. What's going on for you? What is it for your body, your health history, everything else that is important that we address so that we're not missing anything? That way, when you actually start to eat for your hormones in your cycle, you notice a difference. You start to feel and notice these changes happening with your hormones. Otherwise, right? You, you can be like, oh, well, how much more kale do I need to eat? How many more, you know, leaves of spinach? Uh, you know, what else can I try and do? Well, so-and-so is taking this supplement. Maybe I should try that too. I mean, maybe, but you could be taking something that is encouraging the wrong pathway in your liver for what you have going on. I can't tell you how many times I chat with women and they're like, yeah, so-and-so said to take this and I tried it and it really didn't do anything or it made it worse. Yeah, because it's not addressing the specific issue that you have. That's why we do go through things in the 12-week challenge in the specific way, because it addresses what your system needs. But it's not enough. It's not enough just to say eat healthy. It's not enough just to say, oh, cut out sugars and rah, rah, rah. You know, I mean, is that helpful advice? I, sometimes no. Sometimes no. Because if you've done all the things and you still end up in the same place with no results, you have nowhere else to turn. You have nothing else to try. So when you start trying to eat for your hormones in your cycle, to balance things out the way that they should be, to have a normal estrogen flow and a normal progesterone flow, that's where your system starts to shift and change. And your body can only have this balance with these things functioning really well. So it's more about how your body functions, your physiological um, you know, processes that are supposed to happen in the system. And when your body functions well, you feel well, and you get to keep the results that you're going after. Yeah. Um, other resources I have for you are, you know, my podcast is called the female health solution. Um, my YouTube channel is called Dr. Beth Westy. I talk a lot about female health issues. If you guys are ever looking for a video or want me to do more on, um, a specific topic, let me know. You can always drop a comment. You can always send me a message if you are not comfortable commenting, but I'm more than happy to dive into something because these are things that we get so confused on or we get so frustrated on. Cause you're like, gosh, I mean, I have been eating healthy. I've been eating all these foods that are supposed to be for PCOS, but man, I get—I guess I had a cookie, so that's sugar. Maybe that's what ruined it. It is not the dang cookie. It is not the fact that you had a glass of wine with your girlfriends two weeks ago. It is not that little tiny thing that's ruining everything. It's the fact that your underlying system, how your hormones are functioning, how your organs and liver and detox process is functioning that is not keeping up with the hormone process that should be happening. Your hormones should be created and then processed out of your system at a certain rate. And when that doesn't happen, that's when you get other issues there. Now, of course, sometimes the next question you have, just the way, right, the brain works, the female brain works, you're like, mm, but why? But why does that happen? That is the million dollar question for everybody. It's different. It's different for me. I had three kids. Um, they're all two years apart. So I'd have a baby, I would nurse, and then just when my body was starting to recover, I'd get pregnant again, <sighs> have another baby, and then have another baby. <laughs> and I was in grad school, and then started a business, and all this stuff. So I had a preemie, a two-year-old, and a four-year-old, and a brand new failing business. And this was 10 years ago, 11 years ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. So of course my body went berserk for me. I, I am, you know, it was stress that set everything off. That's why I got this. That's why I had major hormonal issues. Stress kicked everything off. Cause I didn't have cysts before that. I didn't have issues before that, but I sure as heck did after, after kids and grad school and all the things. Huh. 
And I struggled with that every month for a year and a half. Every single month I had a cyst that burst. Yeah. Yeah. Not a good time. Not a good time. Yeah. Which is why when I went, uh, when my, uh, I went to, no, let's be honest. My husband dragged me to the ER because he was so worried that I was going to die. And I was like, it's fine. Ugh. <laughs> I'm the worst. And the ER doc was like, well, here's your Vicodin and here's your birth control. See you later. And I was so frustrated because I was, I was doing all of this. I was doing all the clean eating. Yeah. That's what got me started in all this work. So I understand how hard it is to look and look and look for solutions and to try and deep dive and try and figure out like, is it really just this little thing that's ruining everything? No, it's how your body's functioning. Something's not functioning correctly and we have to work with that. So eating for your cycle helps your cycle regulate and function the way that it should. And if there's a liver issue, gut issue, stress issue, sleep, there's more things, right? There's more things that you could have going on. Maybe you have a genetic thing. Maybe you have MTHFR. That's not a swear word. That's a... <laughs> B, B vitamin processing issue. If you want me to talk about that, because a lot of gals with PCOS have estrogen dominance and they can have a methylation issue with their body. So your body does not detox properly on its own. It needs help. Yeah. And the way to know for sure is um, genetic testing. Again, maybe somebody in your family has had this, all that stuff. Really, really important to understand though, how your body's functioning as to why this is happening. That way, when you do something to make progress, it doesn't just plateau, go backwards, or that you can't get that progress again. It's so important that we're doing things to help our systems function better and that we can keep it that way long term. So that's what we do in the 12-week challenge. That's why we do a Dutch test. That's why we go over all this information because it, it provides you with the information you need about your system to make sure that you always stay in the driver's seat of your health. You never get shoved in the back seat on this wild ride, not knowing where it's going to turn next. So anyway, that's what I got for you guys tonight. Please let me know if you have any other questions or need anything else. Um, I'm going to be talking more about endometriosis. I'm going to be talking more about um, fibroids, things like that. I've gotten a lot more questions on that. So let me know if there's other things you want me to cover. Um, if you want me to cover more on like exercise things or other lifestyle things, um, I absolutely can. Just let me know. You can either leave a comment or send me a message either way. Otherwise, I will see you guys later. Have a great night.